Are you thinking about taking vitamin B12 and wondering, can I take this if I'm not actually deficient? Is it going to cause more problems? My name is Dr. Taranell, and in this video, we're going to look at this question. Can you take B12 if you're not deficient? We'll go into some of the risk-benefit analysis of taking B12 when you're not actually deficient in B12. Again, my name is Dr. Taranell, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom, or a question about vitamin like this one. I make these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on with your body and how to optimize things. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, health hormones, et cetera, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to continue getting videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's check out this question. Can you take B12 if you're not deficient? So in this video, we're going to look at the question, can't you take B12 if you're not deficient? So certainly people do take vitamin B12 when they're not deficient, and you can definitely do this. I mean, it's in your multivitamin. The question really you should ask is how much do you take and is it really going to help you? I think this question would generally fall into the category of risk-benefit analysis. Usually people are going to ask this question if they don't really have access to getting B12 testing, or in some cases, they just really don't want to do the blood testing. They're scared of needles and things like this. Certainly makes it a lot easier when you do have a blood test or some indicator that you're low in terms of running that analysis of risk-benefit. So it's probably easier just to get the test done. This kind of test is very inexpensive in the 10 to $20 range. On the other hand, B12 in general is very safe and has a very low risk profile in terms of making you have other problems or have a negative side effect. So in the case that you are having B12 deficiency symptoms like numbness and tingling, maybe some brain fog, difficulty concentrating, decreased energy and motivation, maybe even lack of balance or feeling a little bit uneasy when you're walking around, all these things can be indicators of B12 deficiency. Of course, they're not as specific as a B12 test would be, but they can help kind of guide that decision a little bit. Just keep in mind, all those symptoms could be from something else as well and have nothing to do with whether or not your body has enough B12. So these are some of the things you want to look at when you're running that risk-benefit analysis on whether or not you should take B12. That being, there's not a lot of downside for the vast majority of people, and there's potential benefit, especially if you do have symptoms. Now, if you don't really have symptoms and you're just going to take the B12, well, you may cause a problem that you didn't have but it probably will be pretty short-lived if that does happen as well. So in the case that you have symptoms, you don't know if you're deficient or not, the risk-benefit analysis maybe goes towards taking the B12. In the case that you have no symptoms, the risk-benefit probably goes towards not taking the B12. Now, for someone that's generally very sensitive to things like medications, vitamins, foods, and just generally a very sensitive person towards medicines, that risk-benefit analysis may go towards not taking the vitamin B12 supplement. And again, that's where blood testing would come in to make sure, yeah, it looks like something that is going to benefit you and that would shift it more towards probably taking it. The other thing is if you're someone that's really sensitive like that, taking a different type of B12, like a adenosyl hydroxy version of the vitamin B12 is going to be less potential for causing problems and more potential for that benefit. Now, again, vitamin B12 of all kinds generally does not cause any problems, but for that more sensitive person or people that generally have chronic illness, maybe a little inflammation going on, this type of vitamin B12 is going to be less likely to cause problems. So I'll put a link in the description to that particular type of B12 that we use in the description if you want to check that out. Hopefully this helps answer the question, can you take B12 if you're not deficient? If you do have follow-up questions on this topic, drop it in the comment section. I may do a separate video on that. Definitely try and answer your question. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.